Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now the year 2021 is not so new now. It began almost a month ago and the month is ending in a few days which technically means that the year is now well and truly underway. The past year of course 2020 remembered as a year like no other in recent memory a year when one crisis hit everyone wherever we live crossing every border and shattering so many lives but beyond the pandemic there was also hunger violence suffering banditry kidnappings etc in nigeria and africa and there was of course donald trump joe biden and the united states of america so how will all this reshape the coming months in 2021 a year that in many ways has been sculpted by 2020 how much will we be consumed by new front lines and the old battle lines that continue to linger well today the best analysts are here to help us navigate these chartered and uncharted waters with me in the studio david otto a uk-based international defense and security analyst who's visiting nigeria and also with me in the studio barrister onyedika chi okoria who's a uk trained corporate lawyer and public affairs analyst based here in abuja thank you very much indeed for coming in uh, great to see both of you and i'll start with you david um are you excited about 2021 advancing inexorably forward or are you fearful uh, i think i would have thought that um you know we should reconsider whether 2020 should be taken off the um the universal calendar um the issues that have been faced uh, past year is something that needs to be forgotten of course mm. um you know key to that is one thing you mentioned about the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, which you know is still rampaging um, something which I look at from a uh, security rather than uh, uh, but also uh, from a health uh, perspective mm. um, nothing because health ever, is related to security yes of course it? yes yeah. nothing ever has been uh, weakness to, of this nature where the entire universe you know almost um, has gone on a shutdown mood I'm not, I'm not talking about I know there are differences in terms of how other countries have dealt with this but that stands out for me um, but generally uh, because I look at security from you know the global perspective but mm. also from from Africa I think um, it, it was quite a, a year of, of events after events in Central Africa you've got events in uh, in Nigeria as well you had uh, insecurity as you rightly mentioned kidnapping has gone on the increase um, you know you had the Kankara boys uh, that were um, you know taken and released uh, um, you know later on you've got uh, the crisis in Mozambique um, you know, I think it's a year that, um, you know, should have been forgotten. Uh, but I think, you know, uh, now we're in 2021 and um, hopefully uh, we can see some changes in terms of how um, governments uh, deal with uh, all of these pandemics, including right. uh, the insecurity that we're facing now. Well, I think um, those are very interesting points. Uh, let me come to you, Onyedi Kachi. Um, well, congratulations to all of us for surviving the year 2020 as uh, david was hinting there but let's look at nigeria for example um where do you think the country is heading in 2021 i mean can all the promises made finally begin to deliver real changes in the lives of nigerians oh uh, well just like you rightly mentioned at the beginning uh 2021 is a year that has been sculpted for the most part by uh, the happenings in in 2020 mm. and uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is, is one uh, issue that cannot be wished away so the 2021 is, is still going to be about uh, you know COVID-19 absolutely the the Nigerian people are still you know grappling with these uh, challenges this is a global is a global pandemic mm. and uh, uh, even the the best of us the best uh, countries of the world the United States the United Kingdom mm. are still grappling with this are uh, with these challenges so a lot of people are struggling to to survive uh, MSMEs uh, you know small-scale businesses are at the receiving end of this uh, 
of these uh, problems and uh, in the developing world I mean. yeah even in the developing world we, we've seen that in in the United States where they've had to do a couple of relief packages we've seen that in in Canada uh, you know in the United Kingdom so it shows like you know a lot of businesses are, are packing up and uh, yeah so you can imagine uh, how worse hit the the countries mm -hmm. the the businesses here in uh, in Nigeria, a lot of them are, are also, you know, going out of business. There was the, you know, during the lockdown, the cries from the aviation sector. A lot of the airlines were, you know, laying off staff. You know, we, the we we witnessed, you know, that we had that on the news, and uh, I think a lot of them have started to bounce back, and a lot of them have received, you know, relief packages. So, uh, but I'll say that there's uh, a lot of there's a, a glimmer of hope with the coming of the with the introduction of the vaccines even though we don't have it here in Nigeria but you know we're uh, expected to have it at some point and you know would we'll, you know probably start seeing a, a semblance of of normal of normalcy and uh, that, that should be a glimmer of hope for Nigerians and for businesses and uh, probably that's when you know we can start talking about if Nigerians are getting the changes that right. you know they desire. Okay. So, so amidst the gloom a thin sliver of hope. David what do you expect the big issues to be going forward? Uh, I think uh, the, the big issues for me are always um, you know my lens is always focusing on security uh, because uh, um, I think that is the, the pivotal, um, you know, foundation mm. for any economic or social development. Um, you know, one of the things that have stood out for me, especially when talking about Nigeria, is the appointment of the uh, new service chiefs. Um, the old ones that, um, you know, took over from 2015, you know, had five years, um, almost six years, and uh, they've taken the insurgency war to a certain level, mm. um, you know, Comparatively to the previous uh, administration that had, um, you know, officers, um, senior officers that were two or three years, you know, these ones, you know, stayed for uh, almost uh, five to six years, and uh, they've taken the insurgency to a level which I believe the new um, uh, service chiefs that have been put in place uh, with a lot of experience uh, will be able mm. to look at a scenario where they can, you know, uh, take the insurgency to to a position where it can be handed over to other security services. Now, generally in Nigeria, my experience is that, you know, if the insurgency continues, other cr crimes kidnapping fit into that. Mm. Um, so I, I'm hoping that um, the appointment of these new service chiefs is going to bring some glimmer of hope. Um, you know, they would uh, probably uh, bring into place some, some level of technology. I'm, I'm expecting that, for example, uh, uh, I was talking to a colleague and I said, you know, why don't they bring in the, the Falcon Eye technology which has been used in the uh, southern part of Nigeria where mm. you have the, the pirates being dealt with from a technological perspective, you know, that has a an 80% success that the new chiefs would be looking at. Mm. Bringing this um, kind of uh, technology that will be able to uh, deter the use of the waterways by ISIS members and Boko Haram along the Lake Chad Basin so that you can be able to detect them. I think what the new service chiefs would be looking at, in my opinion, if I were to advise them, was, was to go technology. Mm. The, the insurgency has been brought to a level where these, the jihadists have lost a lot of capacity. Um, time to bring in some other level right. of, of, of engagement. So that, that is my expectation. Um, so that, that really should be from yes. your, uh, I mean, because yes. you're, you're a well-respected international defense and security yeah. analyst. That's the next step in, in the fight against, you know, banditry and... That and should be the next step. Yes, that right. should be the next step. The next step should be um, moving away from the very, very um, man on ground to right. a technological level. Moving where away from analog to yes, digital. From analog to di digital, right. you know, I think that would be uh, my take. Right. But also ensuring that uh, the civil uh, military relations that has been built over the, um, you know, the five years sure. should be continued. And this is where I think uh, the battle of hearts and minds okay. should be. Well, I'll come experience. to you in a moment, but I want to just uh, stay with you, David, yeah. a, a bit further because, I mean, your area of expertise is security. Um, what about the Horn of Africa region um, with, with special focus on what's happened and is happening in northern Ethiopia where the power dynamics have completely changed 
in, in the last year because even though the Ethiopian Prime Minister is insisting that the crisis in the Tigray region is over many analysts and I expect you're probably yeah. one of them believe that that area is likely to be a tinderbox going forward uh, there's also of course the relationship beyond Ethiopia between Kenya and Somalia um, who've taken the decision to sever diplomatic ties so it'll be very interesting to see how that evolves in 2021. The Horn of Africa, Charles, as you know, is a very fragile region. Mm. Um, Ethiopia sits a, in, in, in an area where you've got Somali, Somaliland, and now you have a country that the African Union uh, sits as the headquarters. Um, talked about the silencing of the guns uh, 20, 20, 2063. Mm, absolutely, um, yeah, you and I talked yeah, about so that, didn't Now, we? Yeah. what you've got now is the guns blazing uh, quite loudly um, with the um, the so-called law enforcement mm. uh, which uh, the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ami talked about said you know we would you know, this is going to be a very quick war and one of the things which I warned was it's never going to be a quick war it will move from a conventional uh, warfare attacking the, the, the Tigray People's Liberation Movement now to a, uh, uh, to, to a point where it's gone asymmetric now you've got not just the Amharas mm. that are neighboring uh, the Tigray region you've got Eritrea um, been involved in, in the crisis with accusations that you know they are on the side of the uh, Ethiopian Defense National National Defense Forces. Um, then, of course, you have Sudan, which mm. receives most of the refugees that are fleeing away from the Tigray region. So, the entire Horn of Africa, as you mentioned, is is, is quite fragile. And Ethiopia was one of those countries that held you know uh, this this area together. But absolutely, now in 2021, we've seen a, a scenario where um, that is going to possibly have an impact on. On, on Somalia, which of course has uh, elections coming up, uh, we've seen that. Uh, right. You know, so, so that's a place to watch. The I think it's, 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 a place, right. it's a place to watch. But also, we okay. shouldn't forget Mozambique um, in the east. Absolutely, that, that's a very good point. Let me bring you in, Dikachi Okori. You're a lawyer, although you're a corporate lawyer, yeah. but you're still a lawyer, yes. and and the world is run by rules. And we know that up until 2016 when Donald Trump took over it was run by rules but Donald Trump shattered a lot of those rules um, what do you think about global rules going forward now that that he's gone who's going to be making those rules in 2021 will it still be the US or is it likely to be China or even the European Union who stepped into the breach when Donald Trump moved away from being the global policeman well the donald trump era which had just ended on the 20th of january uh 2021 mm. would be one that will never be forgotten in a haste is, is one like no other so he, he was characterized by a lot of uh controversies uh a lot of breach of of rules uh diplomacy mm. and uh or whatnot uh and uh, i think popular amongst uh, such uh, prominent departures from convention was uh, the uh, uh, Paris Climate Accord, Absolutely. which uh, was entered into by the United States in 2016. And according to Article 28 of that, uh, of that accord, a, a member nation is not allowed to leave the accord uh, within three years of entering it. And by 2019, he had given a notice to uh, the Secretariat that he, that the United States was going to leave the the accord by 4th of uh, November 2020, which coincidentally was, uh, you know, the week of the U.S. election. Right. And so at this point, you know, the United uh, States is is not uh, a member of the. You know, right. uh, accord. although it's going to rejoin. Yes, yeah. the the uh, president, the new president uh, Biden, has uh, indicated through an executive order that he is right. going okay. to rejoin the accord. I tell you what, I'll come back to you and let's finish this. But I got to take a break. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our assessment of the future with the coming year 2021 advancing beyond its first month. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagwalu. So the 21st century turned 21 this month. So far, the century has been through a global war on terror, a global financial crisis, and more recently now, in fact, a global pandemic. There have also been grand plans to save the planet from global warming and climate change, and arguably cli climate deniers such as Donald, uh, Donald Trump. At the same time, we've been covering the planet with electrical devices connected to the internet and mobile phones and trying to pay for some of that using bitcoin or some other digital currency well as we all think of the future in 2021 a note of caution and advice not to disregard the century's history or the history of the past year 2020 and with me in the studio, David Otto, a UK-based international defense and security analyst who's visiting Nigeria. And also with me, Barrister Onyedika Chi Okoria, a UK-trained corporate lawyer and public affairs analyst based here in Nigeria. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And I'll come back to you, uh, Onyedika Chi, because before we went on break, you were making the point about who's going to be making the global rules in 2021. Very quickly, who do you think is going to be doing that? Britain, I mean, um, the UK, the EU, China, the United States? Uh, I think at this point, uh, to answer that question succinctly, uh, China is advancing its uh, hegemony in the world, uh, given that you know, it was the original epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. And while other countries were grappling with this uh, pandemic, you know, they were able to, you know, uh, pull through it and uh, uh, go in their gross domestic product and their economy is doing so well like never before. Mm. They were able to enter into more trade deals. They entered into a trade deal with the uh, European Union uh, uh, and uh, a lot of other uh, trade deals in Africa and uh, other uh, partner countries uh, for its uh, over 1.4 billion uh, consumers in China mm. and uh, the the TikTok app in in which originated from China has you know witnessed a whole lot of uh, massive investments. So it's, it's expected that with that uh, kind of edge in in the global uh, economy, they are going to. Uh, in 2021 probably take its uh, rightful place in in the global committee of nations but that obviously uh, there's a caveat to it because there's a, a new president of the united states president joe biden mm -hmm. who uh, it remains to be seen what his uh, public uh, his uh, uh, foreign policy would be so if uh, i believe if he gets it right then maybe the united states may just be able to keep its place as right. the leader of the group. Okay, well, he's certainly given us some indication of the direction he's going to be going in, and it does look as though he's going to restore the status quo, as it were, the way it was before Donald Trump yeah. came in. But let me come to you, David Otto. We've talked about making the global rules. Uh, what about who is likely to break those rules? North Korea, Russia? Somewhere in Africa? Uh, I, th I think, to be honest with you, Charles, it's all about um, interest. Uh, geopolitics right. is one of the uh, fundamental, um, you know, uh, uh, power, you know, um, you know, some kind of power generation by each country. Uh, you know, countries like Russia or, or Iraq or Iran, you know, or, uh, these countries don't see themselves or China as breaking the rules. They see themselves as, you know, protecting uh, their interests, protecting their interests and mm. positioning themselves, you know, in the geopolitics um, that we, we know. Um, I think the interest is going to be for Africa to uh, take its place. Um, the, uh, the the pandemic has well, demonstrated to, to take its place. I think, you know, it's got to take its place um, and perhaps by attempting to do so. Um, and I think that if they do, uh, position themselves properly, uh, then they have a very big chance of doing so. I mean, the, the, the COVID uh, pandemic has demonstrated uh, mm. the, um, the the weakness of the global economy. See uh, the the impact that is got uh, in in, the, in, the, in America. F mm. More than four hundred thousand people um, killed, unfortunately, died as a result of COVID nineteen. Uh, never before has that ever happened. Uh, talked about the uh, first or second world war, never seen before. So I think. There's always a, a good and a bad, and I think the, the, the good for Africa is to reposition itself and see itself as perhaps the, the continent that could emerge. Now, the, the question is, do we have uh, the leaders? Uh, do we have the right institutions? You know, you were talking earlier with your guest about the, 
uh, the, the Transparency, Transparency International mm. report on, on corruption. Now, these are some of the uh, things which I think uh, African countries need to work on and, and ensure that they have the right institutions, they have mm. the right leadership uh, to, uh, you know, to take over the, um, the entire world, you know, if that is what everyone is doing. So geopolitics is not reserved uh, just for, for Americans, it's not just reserved for, for China or, or Russia. They are all uh, coming towards Africa, and that tells you that you know Africa is in a very, very strong position. Mm. Um, but it's got to position itself. It's got to make sure that it has the economy to do that. Um, you know, from my point of view, it has the security to do that. Well, that's not going to happen in a year. And, is and, and I think you know, uh, 2021 should be the year that um, African countries should uh, look at their security. Look at Central African Republic, mm. uh, where ex-president Francois Bozizi has been, um, you know, set up this. Uh, uh, rebel coalition you know trying to overtake uh, overthrow the, uh, the the current president mm. um, Faustin Tuadora so i think what africa needs to do um, is to realize how strong we are um, you know see the potential uh, that the continent has but nigeria has to be able to take right it's uh, got to take the know, lead and it's and, the and elephant of africa isn't yeah. it and, you know it's got to so, so basically you're talking about starting the process because obviously it won't be completed in 2021 i, I think so. i think the process has got to be started right um, and, and and demonstrably and, and started yes. so that everybody can see that hey they're moving from one to two to four and so on and so forth. I, I think that would make absolute sense if uh, right uh, okay yeah, and well l let me bring you in uh, um yeah. Kirchi, um looking at the year 2021 itself as david was saying from an african perspective as we advance inexorably forward into that year um can we describe it now reasonably confidently as a in the african context post covid year uh well uh, or do you expect things to get worse before they get better uh, that, that, that would be a very hasty conclusion to make because uh, I'll say the COVID-19 pandemic had taken the whole world by surprise. Yeah, but it's taken Africa less, much less than the yes, whole world, uh, uh, which, which is, is why he's able to express the sort of hope and optimism and saying that this is an opportunity that we ought to take advantage of. Uh, of course, uh, there were those uh, predictions that, you know, we're going to be picking uh, bodies on the streets of Africa. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, thankfully so that uh, that that hasn't happened and uh, uh, to the consternation of uh, a lot of world Absolutely. powers Africa has uh, been relatively able to manage the the pandemic uh, contrary to the expectations mm. and uh, you know moving forward I, I hope that in 2021 at some point uh, of course with the introduction of the vaccines like I mentioned earlier uh, you know the, the things are going to be looking up and uh, you know Africa trade relations and uh, you know uh, diplomacy and foreign relations uh, you know vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other continents would be you know better and you know we'll be able to also take our place because Africa as it is is a very strategic uh, continent uh, every other trade block every other continent wants to do business with African countries so uh, I, I think th those are tell uh, tell signs that right you know uh, Africa is the place okay. to be and, and in a post Trump world or, or, or rather, let me put it this way, are we in a post-Trump world? Or, or is it unclear if Donald Trump is going anywhere anytime soon? I mean, you've got his impeachment trial taking place. He's trying to start another political party. And we've got about 20 seconds before we have to go. Uh, the the uh, Trump impeachment, which has been, uh, I said yesterday, 95% uh, of the Republican senators uh, were said to be against that impeachment as being unconstitutional. So uh, I must say the, the former president's uh, political profile still towers and it remains to, to be seen what, what becomes of him. But uh, is Donald Trump popular? Does he have the hegemony? Right. Then that is what it, it is. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Barrister Onyedike Chiyokuria, uh, who is a public affairs analyst and a corporate lawyer, and of course, uh, David Otto, the UK-based international defence and security analyst. Thank you ever so much. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye, and thank you for watching.